Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of uh, our Aviation Week Network ATW Leadership Forum. My name is Kurt Hoffmann. I'm a correspondent for ATW, and I have a great pleasure today to talk to the CEO of Avianca, Anko van der Werf in Bogota. Anko, nice to have you with us. Good morning for me. Good afternoon for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I know you're very busy in, in, in times like this, especially. Avianca, one of the oldest airlines in the world, the second oldest, 100 years old, transporting around 13 million passengers a year. And uh, you told us in an interview earlier this year for ATW in Bogota and your head office about the plans you had. Uh, you have to be, become more efficient, uh, long hauls, plans, and things like that. But however, Corona came up. <laughs> it didn't stop for uh, even to South America, chapter 11. State support is necessary. All this crisis, how much throws Avianca back? How many years? What's the state at mm. moment? Let me let me first say that indeed, I mean the timing of our interview back then, right? End of January, um, pretty much a month before all of this unfolded, was uh, yeah. In in retrospect, uh, an interesting timing, right? I mean, uh, we we had we had a very good evening uh, right that night with with yeah. the one hundred years festivities through. Um, a big party in, in Colombia and afterwards in all the Central American countries and everywhere else. Um, yeah, great. But, uh, but little did we know at that time, right? Uh, a month later, everything would come to a standstill. Um, yeah, how much does it throw us back? I mean, in, in a way, um, one of the, I think, more positive things for us is that already we went through a restructuring last year. So we had our plans. Remember, we also spoke back then about the Avianca 2021 plans. Um, but well, here we are, almost 2021. Clearly, um, we need more work now. But but I think much of what we were planning on doing um, still stands, right? And I think the direction is is still very much the same, in the sense that we still want to lower our costs. You still want to have your costs more flexible, right? With with the fixed costs traditionally in our industry, of course, that that can easily um, well, um, have, a, have a big impact, right? And uh, for every single airline, has become abundantly clear this year. So I think much of what we were planning on doing, we will still do. Um, and yes, um, some things have been delayed. We were on track to densify our fleet already this year. That was a massive capex expansion, of course, or, or expenditure for this year. So we we moved that. But I mean, that will still happen, right? I mean, fundamentally, things will still happen. Um, I think our network review, some of that was already in place. Some of that actually now because of COVID will probably go faster in 2021 now, right? Again, postponed. But uh, but many of the plans that we had in the original Avianca 2021 plan, becoming more agile, becoming more nimble, more efficient, more digitalization, more technology, densification, all of that still stands. So something speeded up maybe a little bit. But you was not flying five and a half months. Is this correct? Yeah. So so um, I don't recall the dates precisely anymore. But probably twelfth of March or something. Our first hub shut down, and then one by one over the next few days until the twenty second or twenty fifth of March, every single of our hubs shut down, um, and then for three months. We were not flying at all, um, right? Apart from humanitarian flights, and then we started back up in in Ecuador, in Colombia, domestic um, five and a half months that we've been on the ground, and then also Central America, uh, and some of those markets for international was even six and a half months, right? So, um, yeah, six months of cargo flights, six months of humanitarian flights, some domestic in Ecuador, but that was really sometimes only four, five, six flights a day. Uh, and yeah, the bulk of our traffic was, uh, or the bulk of our aircraft was stuck um, on the ground for, let's call it six months. Yeah. Even now, right, I mean, early November, we're only flying about 15, 20% of our capacity at this moment. Unbelievable. Is it mostly domestic? Uh, some, some markets uh, recover a bit quicker in domestic markets. And I know in, yeah. in Colombia, there's quite an intense domestic group. And you, yeah. it's domestic number one, and then a little bit of the regional flights. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. I think I think uh, no surprise and not different from any airline in the world. Probably, I mean, if you have a domestic market, domestic recovers more quickly than international, and I think also, um, yeah, BFR and leisure basically, um, right, recover more quickly than business. Right, that's definitely what we're seeing. Now, the, the Central American markets, the smaller markets, let's say. 
they don't really have a lot of domestic markets. So everything is pretty much international, but you still have a quicker recovery intra Central America, for instance. And of course, the stronger rats to the United States, right? I mean, um, that, that still works. That's a lot of VFR, that's a lot of, of, of leisure traffic. Um, yeah, that rebounds. But again, I mean, 20% at Avianca Holdings level, right? At the most, 15, 15% um, throughout October. And now we got some additional slots and everything. So let's say that we're going to go to 20%. That is still very limited. No? Absolutely. And do you think uh, you can increase the capacity or is it uncertain to see because we don't know where is lockdown or where the travel restrictions, uh, which kind of uh, vaccine maybe will be available? There are so many, que so many question marks, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely true. Um, look, we had we had something more aggressive in our in our plans for November. Um, already going more international and more wide bodies again to Europe. Uh, we flew six daily flights into Spain, five basically to Madrid and one to Barcelona before uh, before COVID. We're currently flying one, well, maybe twice a week, right? I mean, that's where we are currently to Spain. We have London, uh, London starting up again. Um, that was a daily product before, now once a week. Um, Munich, for instance, right? I think you took the Munich flight after yes. you, uh, you you flew back from from our party back in uh, back back early in, in 2020. Um, right, that's still that's still a big question mark. I, I would I would doubt at least for the very short medium term that will come back. Right, so yeah, big impacts of course, and and yeah, domestic um, better because there also you have at least one set of rules. Right, I mean exactly what you're referring to, the difference between all the country rules, PCR tests, negative PCR tests, quarantine rules, what have you. Um, of course, didn't make things easy at all for anyone over the past few months. Now, at least in Colombia. This week, uh, good news, um, they have dropped the negative PCR requirements. So that's that's good news. Um, and do this have an, already an impact on load factors when, when something like this will be cutting away? You see them Yeah, yeah I, I think, uh, look, this is this is a decision actually that the government took yesterday um, and it's into effect as of last night. So we have to see, but yeah, clearly that will have a positive impact, I think, because um, it's complicated. It's also complicated in these markets to get a PCR test, right? I had to get a few and over the first few weeks, um, I, I was either not able to get one yeah. or I was able to get one, but no one wanted to commit to, well, we'll give it back to you. We'll give you the results within, well, X number of days. And then, of course, it's already not valid anymore. So then again, you can't travel. So, yeah, um, those complications, right, the, the, the least... The, the less restrictions we have in that sort of yeah. uh, in certain, in those fields, right? Quarantines, PCR tests, the better it is, of course. There's LATAM is the largest group of airlines, I think, in, in Latin America. Then is Avianca, and number three is Aeromexico and Copa, when I remember well. What yeah. do you think? Those were, yeah. One day this crisis will be hopefully disappear or it will change the industry most likely. How, how can you, what do you expect? How will the airline scenery will look in Latin America? Yeah, I actually think that there's a good future still for Avianca, but but certainly for aviation as a whole. Um, look, there's, there's one thing, and I think we touched upon it also when we spoke last, many of these markets, the road infrastructure, right, the highways and stuff, there's no train, there's no highways, or at least limited. Um, there's a lot of mountains, so geography really plays into the hand of aviation. Um, right? If you look at the two biggest cities in Colombia, Bogota and Medellin, uh, Bogota, 10 million people, right, connecting that with multi-million people cities around it, um, Bogota, Medellin, by car, it takes about eight hours, right? Um, 35 minutes by air. So, yeah, for, for the economies and for the economic rebound also that, that we're going to see over the next uh, months and years, for sure, um, aviation is absolutely critical. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty positive, actually, there still for the, for, the, for the medium long term. We have to get through the short term, and that's at least where... We've been working hard and, and um, right, we, I think, have set ourselves up for, for future success there as well. We got the dip approved, we got the dip funded. We have um, right, more cash again in, uh, in, in the bank. So I think that's good. Medium, long term, I'm still, I'm still bullish, let's say, on, on Central South American traffic. And what you have is also Chapter 11. I think also LATAM is in Chapter 11. This is an instrument we, for example, we don't have in Europe. So, yep. uh, and you used it quite earlier, I think. So that was essentially, and, and I can imagine an airline like you or your colleagues 
I happy to have this instrument. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. Look, there's, there's, there's a few angles there. It is a, it's, it's a lot of work. It's very hard work. Um, but I must say that I really do appreciate the well tool, if you like it, um, right of Chapter Eleven and the whole setup. Um, and for those for, for those that are not really familiar with it, I've come to appreciate it as a very it's a, it's it's very geared towards you as an enterprise continuing right going concern that you, that you that you that you that you that you that you survive in a way that you emerge from Chapter Eleven right. Um, it's managed by nothing but professionals, right? If you look at the United States, the courts that they have specifically for this, um, the judges, the trustees, um, UCCs, everything is really geared towards uh, professionalism uh, around you. It's, it's, it's really that. It's a really well-known procedure, of course, in, in the United States as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do appreciate it, although it comes with, of course, additional pressures and time pressures, but, but it, it flows. I think once, once you're in there, it does flow. Um, and yeah, we, we were making use of it to the best, uh, to the best extent, of course. Um, and, and I think so are, are so some of the airlines in the region, Latam, Aeromexico um, joined within, I don't know, weeks and, and, and I think Aeromexico a month or something after we did. Um, so yeah, those three are now in, uh, are now in chapter 11 and uh, working hard to make sure that we take the steps that are necessary to emerge next year. Uh, can you tell us uh, or give us a bit of an update about your partnership with United Airlines and Kingsland? How, how is this working in a crisis like this? Is it very helpful or is it more or less quiet? Yeah, so, so I, think, I, I think to be fair uh, to the ones from United, we have, I mean, above and beyond, we have a very good relationship, right? Uh, both with, uh, with Scott Kirby um, and, and, and John Gibo, um, great personal relationships, but also with their broader team. Um, commercially speaking, of course, when you're on the ground for six months, there's really not much you can do, right? I mean, it wasn't it wasn't much of a commercial year, 2020, right? So that is something that we will pick back up in 2021. But on other elements, definitely um, the stakeholders, both United and Kingsland, absolutely crucial in making sure that we got our dip um, and making sure that they are strong, strong partners for us to make sure that we got right to dip our financing. Um, uh, funded uh, about a month ago, uh, 5th of October, 6th of October, roughly, and um, that we got it approved by the judge at least. So, so yeah, um, very strong, doesn't change anything. In fact, that relationship probably in that sense with, with certainly Kingsland and United has only become stronger. Um, very good to have those partners with us. And I think also you see that, right? You see that there is a role for Avianca to be played because all the suppliers, stakeholders, staff, everyone chipped in and made sure that we that that, that we continue, right, as a business. And, and so Kingsland and United, and, and we, we thank them for that. One role is, for example, with Avianca to be part of Star Alliance. And uh, I remember I asked you this a few months ago, and Bogota is a hub in Star Alliance. Um, how do you see a uh, hub Bogota in the future and will be an alliance important in the future or more joint ventures are the name of the game? Yeah, that last, that last part, I'm still having worked in a joint venture environment for many, many years of my career. I, I still believe that joint ventures are, um, are strong tools. Um, quite frankly, we were on track, of course, to do one with, with Copa and United and we have to see where that uh, where where that pans out, um, not because I'm more negative on it right now, but simply because we have not spent much time on it. Like I said, I mean this hasn't been really a commercial year, right? So so that's really the only reason. Um, I think the hub of Bogota will still exist. Um, it's, it's 10 million people in a catchment area, strong economic center again with a geography that's somewhat against road networks and rail networks. I think therefore that you can make that hub work. Um, and we have seen that historically speaking. Now, will be at least for the for the time being, it will be smaller, right? We all have fewer operations, at least for the right. next few months still. Um, but again, medium long term, I don't see any reason to doubt that. Again, 10 million people, catchment area strong, economy strong, um, one of the bigger domestic markets also in South America, Latin America. Um, I, I think that will still that will still be very successful. Is it a time to think about future aircraft, or is it uh, no time at the moment because you need all the money to survive? Actually, the company, 
because the uh, ACE 21 new allow for your know, long thin roads in America from Bogota to New York or what else is a nice aircraft. But is it time to think about aircrafts like that? No, no, not really. I think I think of course we're always in touch with with both uh, Boeing and Airbus around new new stuff and, and, and yeah. middle of the market or whatever you want to call it, right? I, I call it a seven nine seven. But anyway, I mean there's there's on the Boeing side and of course the LRs on on the Airbus side. Um, yeah, we, we know we know where we think these aircraft end up and what they could potentially do for us. But let's be honest, at this moment, um, yeah, we're not in the market for new aircraft. Uh, no, let's, be, let's be very clear. There. Is the worst over for Avianca? I'm actually I'm actually a bit torn. It's it's I, I am not uh, um, look short term no. Um, no, I think for every single airline at this moment, it's 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 dire. The winter season will be what it will be. If I look at Europe, everyone's scaling back again. I think that's different probably for Latin America because we had, as we have discussed, right, six months on the ground. So we're finally getting back on track. I think Europe had a better summer than we had, but it's now winter season. Everyone's scaling, scaling down. Yeah, we're, we're still we're still growing. Um, but from a very, very low base. Um, I think afterwards, we, we will really make sure that we set ourselves up for success. So, so for the medium long term, yeah, again, I do think that there is a significant role for Avianca to be played, for sure, as a company over the next whatever, right? One, two years, whatever you want to call it, right? As long as COVID lasts and as long as there's no vaccine, yeah, we will be smaller. We won't dump capacity back just like that, right? We will be prudent. But, but again, medium long term, I think a lot of ingredients are there for these markets to still be successful. And for Avianca, with its product, with its service, with, with the company that we are, with the number of aircraft and our capacity shares, I think we will be successful. 100 years of Avianca and there should much more years come. I hope so. There's a much more efficient, much more flexible Avianca. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. One of our taglines has been actually this year that we, we want to go for another 100 years, right? For, for yeah. 100 years more, no? 100 years more. And that is, uh, that's, still, that's still the goal. And therefore, yeah, COVID, hopefully one day when we look back, um, it will certainly be more than a bump in the road, right? It, this will, I think, change um, segments, travel patterns. It will change the market in many ways, as we all know by now. Um, we will have to adapt and we will adapt uh, simply because we have done that for the last hundred years, right? I mean, if you look back, aviation has always been different over those 100 years and we will adapt again. And, and it's a very resilient country. It's a very resilient area in, in, or part of the world region, uh, not just Colombia, but all the other markets with, with strong uh, aviation ties, right? Everything from El Salvador down to, down to Colombia. Anko van der Werf, the CEO of Avianca in Bogota. Anko, thank you so much for your time and your insights about the second you. biggest airline uh, of the world. Thank you very much. And uh, we wish you all the best and good developments and a good restart. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you on board of our aircraft soon again, right? I know that your, your, last, your last long haul flight was probably on us, wasn't it? Absolutely. My last long haul was Bogota, Munich, and I enjoyed it very much. And luckily, I did it early this year. Good. Thanks, Anko. Hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching wherever you are in the world. Take care and until the next time. Bye bye.